After studying this module, you shall be able to know what are the components of human development. Learn about the background and present situations of each such component in India. Identify factors behind their behavior. Evaluate what is being done by the Indian government in their respect. Analyze what still requires to be done regarding them. Aspects of human development. First, let's look at what development is. And to do that, we look at this concept of gross domestic product because that is generally supposed to be the most prevalent index of economic development. What is gross domestic product? It is the sum total of economic activities measured in monetary terms produced in a country within the boundaries of the domestic economy. Now this concept is extremely important in economics and has evolved through the ages. It has not evolved in one day. Let us now understand the concept of gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is the market value of all officially recognized final goods and services produced within a country in a year or other given period of time. GDP is equals to C plus G plus I plus N X, where C is total private consumption or consumer spending in a nation's economy. G is total government spending. I is total investment or business spending on capital. NX is the nation's total net exports calculated as total exports minus total imports. Simon Kuznets ushered in the use of GDP as a measure of economic development. Before mid 20th century, only the concepts national and the per capita incomes were studied. Simon Kuznets is very much responsible for gross domestic product being used as an index of economic development. Now, economic development as measured by gross domestic product is not really the complete picture. It does not indicate what happens to the society, to the human beings completely. Uh, before independence, we did measure national income and per capita income in several ways especially when the British rule was on in India, Dada Bhai Nauraji measured national income and per capita income and found that we are very much short of what is required. Pre-independence, national income and per capita. In 1873, Dada Bhai Nauraji had estimated that the national income of India in 1867 to 1868 was rupees 40 billion, whereas the per capita income was rupees 20. It revealed that colonial rule in India was not at all showing economic development. William Digby's estimated covering 1850 to 1900 also revealed that India was anything but prosperous under British rule. Statistical and methodological defects notwithstanding, these estimates remain a milestone in the economic history of India. There were many subsequent estimates. After independence, the National Income Committee, Government of India, calculated India's national income to be rupees 87.1 billion in 1948 to 1949 and the per capita income to be rupees 255. This can be taken as providing some idea of the situation prevailing at the start of India's post-independence economic development. Let us take a look at the post-independence national income. The Central Statistical Organization regularly publishes national income statistics. Recently, it has started a new series with 1999 to 2000 as the base year. 
post independence national income was calculated and the CSO central statistical organization developed techniques of cultivating and calculating national income. GDP especially after Simon Kuznets made it popular was also used as an index especially to indicate what growth the economy is having within the country, within the boundaries of its domestic economy. These are aspects that we study when we look at economic development as such. Let us take a look at the post-independence national income. The Central Statistical Organization regularly publishes national income statistics. Recently, it has started. Here is a graph of top 5 states of India in annual GDP growth. These are Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. The most important and the fastest growing sector of Indian economy is the services sector. Trade, hotels, transport and communication, financing, insurance, real estate, and business services and community, social and personal services account for more than 60% of GDP. Agriculture, forestry and fishing constitute around 12% of the output, but employs more than 50% of the labor force. Manufacturing accounts for 15% of GDP. Construction for another 8% and mining, electricity, gas and water supply for the remaining 5%. The rate of growth of gross domestic product in India averaged 1.62% from 1996 until 2013, reaching an all-time high of 9.80% in the fourth quarter of 2003 and a record low of minus 1.90% in the first quarter of 2009. What then is human development? Human development looks at other aspects of economic development, not simply at growth, income, per capita income and so on. It looks at various other aspects such as how many years do you expect a newborn when he is born to live? That is known as the life expectancy at birth. This is an extremely valuable indicator of what level economic development has taken the country to. So life expectancy or expectancy of life at birth is a part of human development. Now apart from that, you do want to know how much is the literacy level in the economy. Can people read and write? How much can they calculate on their own? So literacy is another important aspect of human development. You don't call that, you know, there is um, uh, uh, e e economic development taking place in the economy. If you find that people are there but suffering from malnutrition, not living long enough, not being able to read and write, not having any skills and so on. So literacy, life expectation, these things are very, very important to find out whether an economy is really developed or not. Human development, the human beings, how much do they progress in course of the economic process? This is what human development really looks at. Life expectancy is a statistical measure of how many years a newborn may be expected to live. It is a future prediction rather than a past estimation. Before the census started in 1867 to 1872, the average lifespan of the Indian population was as low as 20 to 25 years. Although continuous data is not available, the situation at the beginning of the 20th century was not much better. Expectation of life at birth 
in 1901 to 1911 was only 22.9 years. But there was appreciable increase since the 1920s and in 1941 to 1950. The same expectation was 32 years. Life expectancy at birth for Indian males went up to 48.6 years in 1970 and 63.2 years in 2010. For Indian females, it rose to 49.1 years in 1970 and 67.5 years in 2010. This reflects improvements in medical and sanitation facilities and some degree of the awareness for family planning. What then is human development? Human development looks at other aspects of economic development, not simply at growth, income, per capita income and so on. It looks at various other aspects such as how many years do you expect a newborn when he is born to live? That is known as the life expectancy at birth. This is an extremely valuable indicator of what level economic development has taken the country to. So life expectancy or expectancy of life at birth is a part of human development. Now apart from that, you do want to know how much is the literacy level in the economy. Can people read and write? How much can they calculate on their own? So literacy is another important aspect of human development. You don't call that, you know, there is um, uh, uh, e e economic development taking place in the economy. If you find that people are there but suffering from malnutrition, not living long enough, not being able to read and write, not having any skills and so on. So literacy, life expectation, these things are very, very important to find out whether an economy is really developed or not. Human development, the human beings, how much do they progress in course of the economic process? This is what human development really looks at. P. Life expectancy at birth in India by state in 2002 to 2006 from UNDP report published in 2011 can be seen with the help of this map. Kerala tops the chart with literacy rate above 70%. Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Delhi have a literacy rate in the region of 66 to 70 percent. Rest of the states are divided in the group of literacy rate between 61 to 65 percent and below 61 percent. Data for some of the northeastern states are not available. The Kerala figures for 2006 to 2010, the same period are 72 and 76.8. The Tamil Nadu figures are 67.6 and 70.6. However, the Orissa figures are 62.3 and 64.8. And Bihar figures are 61.6 and 62.8. But in general, in every state, there has been improvement and no deterioration. Indians, on an average, are living longer. However, it is a matter of concern that the number of deaths in the age group below 50 is going up, as revealed in the recent reports on global burden of disease, published in medical journal The Lancet. To be literate is to have the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, has drafted a definition of literacy as the ability to identify, understand, interpret, create, communicate, compute, and use 
printed and written materials associated with varying context. Literacy involves a continuum of learning in enabling individuals to achieve their goals, to develop their knowledge and potential, and to participate fully in their community and wider society. UNESCO aims at 100% literacy in the world by 2015. India currently has the largest illiterate population. The world's average literacy rate is 84% and the Indian literacy rate was 74.0% in 2011. The decadal literacy growth 2001 and 2011 was 9.2%, less than the growth seen during the previous decade. Now, let us look at this map which represents global literacy rate based on United Nations Human Development Report 2011. As we can see, India lies in the group of countries having literacy rate in the region of 60 to 70 percent. The adult literacy rate and the youth literacy rate for the world 84, for China 95.9 and 99.4 and for India 74.4 and 82, for Bangladesh 53.5 on the eve of independence from British rule, India was characterized by mass illiteracy. The 1941 census, the last census under British rule, estimated the literacy rate to be 17%. Because of India's oral tradition and the Gurukul or ashram system of education, coupled with the traditional gender bias, rise in literacy in India was witnessed only under British influence, that is, in the colonial period. Let us now analyze the literacy rate of India from pre-independence to current period as per 2011 Census of India. On x-axis, we consider time period from 1900 to 2010 and on y-axis, we take literacy rate. After independence, the provision of universal and compulsory education for all children in the age group of 16 to 14 years found a place in the directive policy in Article 45 of the Constitution. Various schemes and policies were adopted with various degrees of success to make the ideal a reality. Constitution's 86th Amendment Act 2002 made elementary education a fundamental right for children in the age group of 16 to 14 years. The literacy rate in India grew from 18.33% in 1951 to 28.30% in 1961. 34.45% in 1971, 43.57% in 1981, 52.21% in 1991, 64.84% in 2001, and 74.04% in 2011. The population, meanwhile, grew from 361 to 1000 210 million. After half a century of economic development, in 1990 to 1991, adult literacy growth grew to 64 for males and 39 for females, as derived from the census reports and cited in India Economic Development and Social Opportunity. Now, the person who is most responsible for making human development a part of uh, the calculus of economic progress is Amartya Sen and Mahbub Rahman of East uh, Bengal and Pakistan. Now, you see, 
these are the people who have introduced the calculation of human development indices as part of the United Nations program. So, human development, the calculation of human development and the calculation yearly annual calculation of human development index as brought out by the United Nations Development Program UNDP. For that, we must thank these two great economists. The human development index ranks all these aspects together in one calculated index taking care of the GDP, taking care of the life expectancy, taking care of the literacy, they weave it into one particular index which is calculated for all countries which come under the United Nations. And then according to the index, this is arranged or calculated in a kind of ranking. So, looking at the ranks, you can make out whether this particular country has moved up and down the ladder. For example, India has improved its ranking. India to begin with was a less developed economy so far as this human development index is concerned. But after independence, we have made such strides in literacy level, such strides in uh, life expectancy especially for women that we have really pulled ourselves up and we are now ahead of Bangladesh for example, ahead for example of Pakistan and so on. The fiscal allocation to govern mental education sector is very low. In spite of a target allocation of 6% recommended by Kothari Commission, the percentage allocated to education was never above 4.3% of the GDP from 1951 to 2002. Primary level government schools are marked by inadequate and inappropriate school facilities, apathy and inefficiency of teaching staff who are themselves inadequately paid, lack of drinking water, toilets and safety measures like fire precautions. Caste disparities resulting in high enrollment and dropout rates. Poverty in India has also deterred the pursuit of formal education, which is regarded as a lesser priority among the poor as compared to other basic necessities. Prevalence of massive illiteracy among women is another reason for the low literacy rate in India. Female literacy rates are lower at 65.46% than that of their male counterparts at 82.14%. The gender gap appears to be narrowing. Growth in female literacy rate was substantially faster than in male literacy rates, 6.9% in 2001 to 2011. India displays much regional disparity. The state of Kerala, in particular, stood out in contrast with adult literacy at 94 for males and 98 for females in 1990 to 1991. This, of course, is admitted to be largely due to Kerala's historical background. Mizoram is the second most literate state in all of the India, second only to Kerala. Bihar and Arunachal Pradesh are the two only states where less than 75% of the male population is literate. Six Indian states account for about 70% of all illiterates in India and these are Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and West Bengal. Slightly less than half of all Indian illiterates are in the six Hindi speaking states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. Interestingly, variations in literacy exist even between adjacent states. States which have had success in their recent literacy efforts include Bihar, Himachal Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan. The government, the corporate sector 
as well as non-governmental organizations in India are trying to improve the literacy level in India and thereby the level of human development. Gross enrollment ratio or gross enrollment index is a statistical measure used in the education sector and by the UN in its education index to determine the number of students enrolled in school at several different grade levels and examine it to analyze the ratio of the number of students who live in that country to those who qualify for the particular grade level. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization describes gross enrollment ratio as the total enrollment within a country in a specific level of education regardless of age expressed as a percentage of the population in the official age group corresponding to this level of education. To calculate the GER, a country divides the number of individuals who are actually enrolled in schools by the number of children who are of the corresponding school enrollment age. There are three gross enrollment ratios, primary, secondary, and tertiary gross enrollment ratios. Gross primary school enrollment ratio considers children usually between the age of 6 to 11. Gross secondary school enrollment ratio considers children usually between the age of 12 to 17. Gross tertiary education enrollment ratio considers the number of young people in the five-year age group following the secondary school leaving age, that is usually 18. GER is the percentage of students enrolled in educational sector of different levels, primary, secondary, and tertiary level of education as compared to the population of school age children of these levels. If a country has 6 lakh people enrolled in school in 2013 to 2014 and the total number of school age individuals is 10 lakhs, then it has a gross enrollment ratio of 6. In the calculation of the knowledge component of the HDI, combined gross enrollment ratio incorporating all three levels of education is used with a one-third weight. The adult literacy rate is given one-third weight. In spite of that, there are troubles. We have problems. Our gross enrollment ratio, that is how many students do keep uh, do get enrolled and then keep on attending school, these things do uh, require a lot of uh, improvement. Regional differences are there. All regions are not of the same level. Uh, there are states like Bihar, for example, Madhya Pradesh, for example, which are much below the standards of, let's say, Kerala or Mizoram. So th these regional differences need to be smoothed out. And uh, we need to improve definitely before we can go up to the ranks of, let us say, Sweden and uh, USA, for example, and so on. But nevertheless, improvement is taking place. And we cannot say that we are lagging behind still. There is uh, a lot to be done still. But then we are forging ahead in terms even of human development indices as brought out by the UNDP. I hope you've got some idea of what human development is, especially in relationship to economic development. Let us summarize the points. I hope you know, that will be helpful for you. GDP per capita is an important component of human development as well as economic development in general. That is the first point which you should remember. The rate of growth of gross domestic product or GDP in India averaged 1.62% from 1996 
until 2012, reaching an all-time high of 5.8 percent in the fourth quarter of 2003 and a record low of minus 1.9 percent in the first quarter of 2009, reflecting the global slowdown, but we have confidence that it will soon pick up. Life expectancy at birth, which is the second very important component of human development, went up to 63.2 years in 2010. This reflected improvement in medical, nutritional and other aspects of economic development. It is these aspects of medical, nutritional, etc., which make human development a distinct concept from economic development. Then we come to the Indian literacy rate which improved, which improved really fast after independence to 74.4% in 2011. But nevertheless, in spite of astounding performances by Kerala and other states, India still remains the country with the largest illiterate population in the world. The gross enrollment ratio in India too is low bringing down this third component of the human development index calculated by the UNDP. Nevertheless, the human development index has been going up for India and we find that in terms of human development as well as economic development in India in general, India has really progressed.